It's about 30 seconds now from launch. There was a sensor issue. It seems they're working through that. The countdown continues. Looks like this is going to go. We're going to turn it over to NASA. Enjoy. K okay, minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engine full power. And liftoff. Go Falcon. Go Dragon. Go Crew 7. Endurance ascends an international crew Copy, destined alpha. for the International Space Station. Stage 1 That's propulsion 1. 7 is million. Good calls from the propulsion officers here. Propulsion's nominal. 7 million pounds of thrust on Falcon 9, taking Crew 7 to the International Space Station, now traveling almost 300 miles per hour. Nominal power and telemetry. We are just about T plus 45 down. seconds into the seventh rotational crew mission on board Dragon and Falcon 9. And right now the vehicle is throttling down to help us pass through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. There's the call out that Crew 7 is now moving faster than the speed of sound. Stage one throttle up. Confirmation we have moved through max Q and are throttling back up. Copy, one Bravo. Heard that call from Jasmine on Crew 7, as well as confirmation from the ground. The call out for one Bravo means we are in the second and final abort mode for the first back, stage, chill continuing is underway. to get good performance. We've got in, uh, engine chill on the second stage M back engine. We will then be looking for Miko or main engine cutoff where the nine engines on the first stage will cut off ahead of the first and second stages separating. Then the, not, the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite. We are now coming up on two minutes into the flight, the spacecraft traveling over 2,000 miles per hour. Really incredible nighttime views of Falcon 9 and Crew 7 on your screen right now. So as Leah just mentioned, we are keeping an eye on a couple of critical flight milestones coming up back to back here. Stage one throttle Those down. are going to be Miko. So main engine cutoff now that we're throttling down stage one, followed by stage separation and second stage ignition. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Copy, two alpha. And back ignition. So there you heard and saw Miko stage sep, and hopefully you heard Jasmine call out for the two alpha abort mode just before second stage ignition. And of course, this is the second stage powering Dragon on its flight, now traveling almost 4,000 miles per hour, over three minutes since launch. The second stage will continue to power the spacecraft and our first look at the crew inside. We'll be standing by for Seco. That's the next major milestone for this second stage engine that comes shortly before nine minutes into the flight. So we've still got some time on this engine. So right now, while Crew 7 makes its way to orbit, our first stage booster is making its way back to land. So you may hear the call outs here on the net shortly that we are in the middle of our boost back burn. Right now, stage Dragon, one is coasting. Dragon, SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Good call outs there that Dragon is on the right track. <laughs> and confirmation from Commander Jasmine McBelly. Continuing to see good performance on this lone Merlin vacuum engine on the stage. 
Also, as we've heard, nominal trajectory. That's the guidance navigation and control officer here at SpaceX stating that we are on the correct path. Dragon's pointed in the right direction. The second stage continues firing until, like we mentioned, second stage engine cutoff at about eight minutes and 50, five zero seconds into the flight. Right now, we are four minutes and 30 seconds since our on-time liftoff, now traveling at 5,000 miles per hour. This single Merlin vacuum engine can provide over 220,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space, doing its job to take our crew to the International Space Station today. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. More good news from Mission Control. Acquisition of signal, Marina. So with that Bermuda call out, we actually know that the ground station transmitting this flight data back to us is coming from Bermuda. The crew is currently pulling a little more than 1G as the second stage engine continues to propel their flight. Continuing to hear good calls to the crew, now five minutes and 30 seconds into the flight, traveling at 6,400 miles per hour. Again, we will continue to see the second stage fire for about three more minutes. Shortly after second stage engine cutoff, we will see it separate Dragon from Dragon, Dragon, which Dragon will continue its journey. Now at this point in the flight, we are just about 15 seconds away from stage one entry burn start. At this point, the center engine on Falcon 9 will be lit for just about 10 seconds to help us slow the vehicle down as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. That's not the only thing helping us on re-entry, though. The first stage sees high drag on re-entry, which scrubs roughly 70% of the velocity by the time the landing burn begins, which you just had great views of on the left-hand side of your screen. Florida Space Coast beginning to come into view in the background. All while Crew 7, of course, on the right-hand side of your stream, screen, lit up by that MVAC engine, continues so on its way to orbit. We are just about seven minutes now after liftoff of the four astronauts. They are looking good. They are pretty much safely in orbit. And what we're watching right now here from the Kennedy Space Center live is the Falcon 9 rocket booster coming back down for the first time here to the Kennedy Space Center. So there is a landing zone that SpaceX uses not far from us. It's actually over at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station where SpaceX typically when they launch a rocket without astronauts, they'll bring it back down if they have enough fuel. And that is happening as we speak. Haven't felt a sonic boom yet, but you may, if you're awake with us, touching down, look at this, not far from where we are. And there it is. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, successfully landed back at landing zone one in Florida. So we were waiting for a sonic boom out here. And when we didn't hear it, we thought it wasn't going to happen because the rocket touched down just to my left, like I said, over at the Space Force Station. But then it came a few seconds later, right, Jeff? I think it caught both of us uh, by surprise. Sounded like a really loud firecracker. SpaceX does it yet again. Not only did they get the four astronauts up to space, but they brought back the rocket down to use it yet again. The capsule has been reused several times already going to the space station. So this is a reused capsule, and now this is a going to be a reused booster. It's very, very rare that SpaceX ends up scrubbing a launch because of hardware. In other words, the rocket or the capsule, sometimes it's weather, but it is uh, usually never happening out here to where SpaceX decides that they want to push their launch back because of either a last minute issue or an issue that they're working on. So last night that happened. It turned out really not to be an issue. It just turned out, as we said, NASA needed a little bit more time to make sure that their systems were working as they expected and anticipated to make sure that the valves were closing in that life support system, like I said. Uh, and then tonight there was a sensor issue. But remember, 
there's hundreds, maybe thousands of sensors on board uh, all of this hardware on board, not just the rocket, but the capsule. Things that mission control NASA here at the Kennedy Space Center is watching every second. Most of these sensors work fine all of the time. Sometimes if the sensors need to shut down the systems immediately, they do, and they will call for an abort immediately or cause an abort immediately. Sometimes the sensors, in this, in this case it sounds like it was a fueling sensor, are monitoring the rate of fuel. Um, not just how quickly, but uh, uh, how much, if it's cold enough. Remember, it's a super cold fluid. They have to chill down the engines. All of this has to happen in time as we count down for launch and right on time. And that sensor was showing something wrong. We don't know exactly what it was, but NASA uh, obviously cleared it. There are sensors and there are redundant sensors. In other words, there are backups to those sensors. So NASA was able to work through this and realize that the sensor issue turns out was not a sensor issue. So we launched right on time. I guess the second day we launched right on time at 327. All four astronauts are in space right now. That rocket booster landed back here right next to the Kennedy Space Center successfully as SpaceX has done recently. And then just about 24 hours from now, a little under that, the astronauts will arrive at the space station with our single NASA astronaut 